take these final moments to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and pray together our parish mission prayer. Through your Son, Almighty Father, we have received the mission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. Help each and every one of us at St. Patrick Parish to go, make, baptize, and teach so that each person that we meet will fall in love with you and seek your love in the sacraments. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Good afternoon. Let us now join into worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39. Please stand. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly Till the Son of God appear, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her way. To the O Israel. O come, O come, the Lord of might, who to thy tribes of Sinai sight, in ancient times did give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to the O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. 
as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, 
who are you? He admitted, and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. And they asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate uh, what the church calls Gaudete Sunday, which means Rejoice Sunday. We hear this in the readings um, that uh, we hear in the first reading. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings. And then on the second part of it, it says, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. And in the second reading today, we hear brothers and sisters rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. So we're talking about joy here. We're talking about joy, the great gift from Almighty God. And one of the things that I've found over the years is that joy is more than happiness. Happiness can be fleeting. But joy remains, maybe deep underneath our suffering and our struggles, but it can remain, even in the midst of suffering and struggles. Because joy comes not from external circumstances, but from knowing who we are and whose we are. It's knowing our identity and our destiny, who we are and whose we are. I was, uh, we had our um, priest convocation, or rather day of prayer this past Wednesday, And one of the stories that the uh, speaker gave was about this Civil War soldier that he gets news from home that both his brother and his father have died. And being the only male left in the house, he knew that if he didn't survive the war, his family farm would pretty much fall apart. And so he asked his CO if he could have permission to go back to his home and help his mother take care of the farm. And the CEO said, well, I don't have the authority to give that to you, to say that. He says, well, who does have the authority? He says, well, only the president of the United States. And they were in Annapolis area, so he said, well, can can I go to ask the president? He says, well, I can give you leave, but it's wartime. They're not going to let you into the White House. He said, well, can I try anyways? So the CEO gives him permission to go, and he goes off, and he gets to the White House, and just as he was told, they wouldn't let him in. So he went off, and he went to nearby uh, uh, parkland, and he just found this bench, and he just started crying. Crying for the whole situation, losing his brother, losing his father, his mother probably going to lose the farm. And this little boy comes up to him and sees him crying. He says, why are you crying? He tells him the story. He says, so you need to talk to the president then? He says, yes. And the boy takes him by the hand. He starts dragging him along, and the soldier, not having much energy to do much else, just follows him. And they go behind the White House into the Rose Garden and then through the back door and past the guards. And he goes up to this door and just opens it without any problems. No one's stopping him. And inside is Abraham Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln looks down and sees his son. And he says, what can I do for you? His son knew his identity. And he had access to the father. Do we remember who we are as sons and daughters of God? 
that we have that free access to the Father. That we have that free access to the Father. So one of the images of our identity that we hear in the scriptures is that we are sons and daughters of Almighty God. Another is that we are the bride of Christ. You know, when you go to as many weddings as I do, because after all, I'm a priest and I do a lot of them, uh, you start to notice what's going on and some of the special moments. And of course, one of the big special moments is when the bride walks in. Where does everybody's face go? They all turn and look at the beauty of the bride. I, looked, I like to look at the groom. Because the change on his face when the bride walks in. Some I've seen start crying. Others, it's just like, <gasps> there's this glory that takes place in this groom. Some of you are looking at each other and saying, no, it didn't happen with us. Well, <clears throat> for the most part, it does. That the bridegroom changes when the bride enters. And this is how Christ greets us. When we come in to Mass when we come into adoration, when we come to our prayer time, that change, that delight on his face, that his bride, as church, we are all his bride, even the guys out there, that his bride has come to spend time with him. He rejoices. Do we know who we are? Do we know whose we are? And we'll have joy when we recognize this incredible gift. But what are the obstacles to joy? And there are obstacles to joy. I'm not going to name them all because I, quite frankly, don't know them all. But I am going to name a few. One of the obstacles to joy is spiritual amnesia. Spiritual amnesia. Spiritual amnesia robs us of our joy when we forget who we are to Almighty God. When we forget our identity as son, as daughter of Almighty God, it can rob us of our joy. You know, this is when we start to put our identity in the things that can be taken away. We put our identity in the fact that we're mother or father, husband and wife. We might put our identity in the work that we do, the way that we're able to serve others. But when our identity is based on, the, on something that can be taken away, when it is taken away, we lose all sense of self. But that's not our real identity. Our identity is based on something that can never be taken away from us. But too often we put the weight on those things that can be taken away. For instance, in my own life, of course, as priest, I see that as my identity is God has changed me in an ontological way at the very core of my being to be priest. But very often I associate my identity with what I do as priest. You know, celebrating Mass, preaching, hearing confessions, ministering to the sick, to those who come to me, those who need, need to be talked to. But I'm not sure if you remember this time, maybe about almost four years ago, COVID. Anyone ever heard of that? No? No? Okay. Well, during that time, we had those lockdowns where we had no public masses, where I wasn't able really to interact with people on a regular basis. I'm not sure about you, but during that time, I got somewhat depressed because everything I put my identity in was taken away from me. Yes, I still continued to celebrate Mass alone. I was still open for confessions. But we had to be behind plastic with breeze coming through and all this stuff, and I never got to see anyone face to face. And in that time, there was this deep darkness that had entered in. And over time, the Lord brought some healing to that, but it was really only... Uh, when I was on retreat a few weeks ago, and I was really had the chance to examine what was going on inside of me, 
And they kept talking about it over and over and over again. Finally, I said, that must be it. That there was this lie. This lie that I had bought into. This lie that I allowed to enter my heart and my soul. This lie that I am not a good priest. And so I brought it up in spiritual direction over the retreat. The person said, have you renounced that? I says, not out loud. He says, you need to do that. When I went into adoration, and there were other people around, so I didn't shout it out, but I did whisper it, and I renounced it out loud in the name of Jesus. And I felt everything set free. I was set free in that moment. I, it was a visceral feeling within me, and I knew I was different. Do we believe those lies about our identity? When we put our identity on the things that can be taken away, they're not really our identity. And we can get depressed when that is removed from us. We forget who we are and who are we. We are God's beloved sons and daughters. Since that retreat, every time I dip my finger into the holy water, and I make the sign of the cross, because it's a reminder of our baptism and who we are, I say, you are my son. Reminding myself who I am and whose I am. In the second reading today, we hear, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. Too often, though, we allow comparing, complaining, competing, criticizing to lead to cynicism, these cancers of the soul. Instead of rejoicing and thanking God in all things. For those of you who are at my Thanksgiving homily, you'll remember this story. I told about uh, Corey Tenboom, how she uh, wrote a book called The Hiding Place, which uh, was a story about how she and her family hid Jews during the um, uh, Second World War. Uh, she was a Dutch Christian. She and her family ended up uh, being arrested, and she and her sister Betsy were put into a concentration camp. When they were put into the concentration camp, the room, the building they were put in was built for 400 people and fit 1,400 people. It was overcrowded, it was nasty, and there were fleas everywhere. And so Betsy said, but wait! Wait, Corey, we heard this morning, we read this morning, in all circumstances give thanks, so we need to give thanks to God for this circumstance. Corey's like, what? Just, well, the fact that we were put in here together. Yes, Lord, thank you that we were able to be together and not separated across the camp. And the fact that, you know, in, in, there are so many people in this bunkhouse, we'll be able to share the word of a God with them. Yes, thank you, God, for the overcrowded conditions. And the fact that we were able to sneak this Bible in, which was against all odds, it was miraculous that they were able to sneak the Bible in. Yes, Lord, thank you. And thank you, we got to thank God for the fleas. I can't thank God for the fleas, Betsy. She said, no, we thank God in all circumstances. So she said, okay, thank you, God, for the fleas. But she didn't feel it. However many weeks or months later, the book doesn't say. But Betsy discovered that none of the guards ever entered that bunkhouse. So they were able to do all their ministering, their evangelizing, their prayer services. They were able to have their privacy. Why? Because of the fleas. And Betsy discovered this and she tells Corey, the fleas, the fleas! And Corey says, what? And she tells the story, it's like, oh, thank you God for the fleas. In all circumstances, give thanks. Not comparing, complaining, competing, criticizing, leading to cynicism. Rather, giving thanks. So, what are the obstacles to joy? First, spiritual amnesia. We forget who we are and whose we are. Second is unforgiveness. When we hold grudges, resentment, when we hold this against other people, it does more damage to ourselves than it does to the other person. And it robs us of our joy. Unforgiveness. And then the third thing that I would say is clinging to sin. 
I'm not just talking about sin because sin can be forgiven if we turn it over to the Lord. But clinging to sin, addiction to sin, this is putting other things ahead of God, that we hold on to those addictions, hold on to those sins instead of surrendering them to the Lord. St. Therese of Lisieux said this, that she finds perfection easy to practice. He said, imagine a small child who has done some sort of uh, sin against his mother. If he goes and put, hides in the corner with a sullen look on his face, of course his mother is uh, going to punish him. But if he goes to his mother and says, I'm sorry, holding out his arms, give me a hug. How can his mother resist but pulling him close and holding him to her heart. Even though she knows perfectly well he's going to do it again the next time the occasion arises. If he takes her by the heart again, he will never be punished. The words of St. Therese, doctor of the church. But when we hold on to our sins, when we refuse to go to God for forgiveness, that's what robs our joy. But good news, today's first reading we hear, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to heal, bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives. He wants to give us liberty. He wants to set us free. Are we ready for this freedom? I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now where we'll renounce our sins, profess our faith, Forgive, and then renounce those lies and addictions which uh, keep us from joy. It's not going to be uh, extensive. You'll have to do things on your own, and I can't make you do it, but I'm going to invite you all to say the words, even if it doesn't apply to you, so that the person next to you doesn't say, well, this really applies to me, oh no. Um, But I invite you to enter in. If, if you just speak the words, it, it's not going to do anything. But if you enter in, there's the opportunity for God to set us free. So I'm going to start with just this uh, repentance and faith. So repeat after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for all of my sins, for the ways that I have rejected you for the ways I put myself first. I know that you are God. And I claim you as Lord and Master of my life. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you all my sins. I am your son, your daughter. Hold me close. Now we'll work on praying for forgiveness. And I want you just to think about who is the person or persons that have hurt you most, that you hold the deepest wound. Maybe those people with grudges that have gone long years that you've held. Think about this person. This is an opportunity not to say that they have done nothing wrong. Very often they have done something very wrong but to surrender them into the hands of Almighty God. So I invite you to repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I forgive this person who has hurt me most. I give this person to Jesus. Forgive this person, Lord. And help me to forgive. Now we're going to pray some renunciation. So repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that God does not love me. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I'm a bad child of God. In the name of Jesus, 
I renounce the lie that I am unlovable. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I am unloved. In the name of Jesus, I renounce spiritual amnesia. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all addictions. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to medications. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to drugs. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to alcohol. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to nicotine. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to caffeine. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all addictions to screens. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to TV. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to movies. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to YouTube. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to social media. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to pornography. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to violence. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to sugar. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to food. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to exercise. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to sex. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the addiction to gambling. Now I invite you to pray a prayer of authority. In the name of Jesus, I I take authority over all these spirits I've renounced. And I command that they leave now and go straight to the foot of the cross for Jesus to deal with as he will. Never to harm me or anyone else again. I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing. Almighty God, we ask that you pour down your blessings upon your sons, upon your daughters. May they know their identity, their destiny. May they know who they are and whose they are. May they know deeply that you have called them by name. That you look at them in their mess, in their struggles, and you love them. May they see, Lord, how you gasp in awe as a bridegroom does a bride. That you love to see them coming to your heart. Lord, may they know before everything else that they are beloved of you. Let everything else pass away. We ask that you bless them with the surest blessings, the blessings of a father, the blessings of a lover, the blessings of God, Creator. Bless them, Lord, with the greatest blessings to their hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We call to mind our needs in joy, for in God we have, all, we have the answers to all our prayers. <clears throat> for the church, that we may prepare the way of the Lord, removing the obstacles that block the grace we receive from God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, governor, legislators, judges, and all in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom they may work to uphold religious freedom and conscience rights protection for all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For glad tidings for the poor, healing for the brokenhearted, liberty for those held captive, and a year of favor for the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who find it difficult to handle the stresses of this holiday season may realize the comfort and peace that Jesus offers to those who are burdened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper trust and openness to the Holy Spirit in people discerning a call to serve Christ through the priesthood or in consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Joey Kuchard Sr., James Warren, and all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the Choquette and Lozelle families, Rita and Jerry Trottier and Julia Lawler, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you fill the hungry with good things. You sent the rich away empty. You lift up the lowly. May we realize the wisdom of your goodness as we address our needs to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tender with 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our benefit of all His holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us by your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Take away the sins of 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Destroy our 
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, uh, I will be available for confessions this Wednesday at 8 p.m. in the Reconciliation Room. Also, uh, Christmas is coming up really quickly, so next weekend... The 4 o'clock Mass and the 8 a.m. Mass and the 10.30 a.m. Mass are all for the fourth Sunday of Advent, which is still required. Even though Christmas Eve is on Sunday, we still have to go to a Sunday Mass. And then the Christmas Masses are 4 p.m. on on Sunday afternoon, 7 p.m., midnight. What time is midnight? (laughs) Right? And then... 9.30 9.30 a.m. on Christmas morning. So um, we have two different days of obligation next week. One is for the Sunday, which can be fulfilled by Saturday night. And one is for Monday, which can be filled by Monday afternoon or evening. 
So if you go to the four o'clock on Sunday, that doesn't count for both. You got that? <laughs> also, just a reminder, with that four o'clock mass, it is a uh, very, it's the kids' mass. It's very full. Uh, we start the, uh, the, the carols and the pageant around 3.30. And um, if you get there at 3.55 you may or may not, A, get a parking space, B, get a seat, just to warn. We do this every year, but just wanted to make sure we're aware that it's very usually very full at the 4 o'clock Mass for Christmas Eve. Also, uh, the Christmas Eve Mass at 4 p.m. will be uh, run live on Pelham Television, so all those of you watching right now and you can't get out, uh, you can watch the Christmas Eve Mass at 4 p.m. next Sunday. Also, we're still looking for extraordinary ministers for our Christmas Masses. We need one for the 4 p.m. Mass and one for the 7 p.m. Mass, one for the Midnight Mass, and those sign-up sheets are in the sacristy. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing the song that sends us forth, number 388. God has chosen me, number 388. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to set a light on you fire. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth.